Hey everybody, so I am back today just doing a little bit of a holiday loot as well as um, I guess uh, just what's on the table update. Um, not tremendously different than what's last time, but I've made progress of the stuff that was on the table. Um, I haven't had a lot of time, as many of you probably can understand, being the holidays. Um, had family in town hosting at the house and and so I haven't had a whole lot of actual modeling time. Um, I have um, primed my Screaming Eagles um, and also put plaster the bases and things so just sort of getting ready them ready for paint. Um, in between time during the holidays I did uh, put together um, my Thunderbolt and so this is the Revel um, Thunderbolt um, and so um, Yeah, P47D, I guess is the number. It's got, I, en I ended up putting, I guess the rockets were optional. I ended up putting all the bombs in as well as the rockets. Because I'm looking at doing it as sort of a ground um, attack uh, light bomber. And so I wanted it heavily armed with all of everything that was there. Um, and so got that. And I've, so I've got this to paint up now. Um, I'm going to have to figure out a way to put it on a stand. I have a couple of ideas, but just so I can use it in game. I actually got um, all of the work done on my Sherman to get it up to speed. Um, I'm not putting the tracks on yet because um, just from experience in the past, I just don't like having to paint the tracks once they're already on um, a different color than the main body color. I just find that it's a bit of a pain. And so um, I had to to green stuff and smooth out. There was actually a hole in the side of the body right there. Um, so I had to smooth that out with some green stuff because um, it's just very thin plastic in that spot. And so I did that and I smoothed um, all of this extra flash and there were big huge chunks of resin on there as well as if you remember on the last video I've magnetized and completely smoothed this down and so it actually fits great now. Um, this one um, has the 76 millimeter um, cannon, so it's a bit uh, more of a has a bit more punch than the other one I have. Which um, I'm going to be painting them the same, and I I'm keeping it out for reference because it's been a while since I built this kit. But uh, this is my one that you've, we've seen before on the channel, and this is the new one. If you notice, the turrets are actually different, um, so it is a bit of a slightly different model of Sherman. Um, turrets are slightly different. This one's actually a bit bigger that has a 76 millimeter. Um, those of you that are like World War II experts just likely know all this like the back of your hand but um, all the different models and the differences I actually don't. Um, I'm actually kind of interested in learning a little bit more about it. I actually quite like I'm kind of getting into it now um, and um, so yeah I've put my guns on and all my my flashy bits because um, the, the this particular kit gives you metal bits for here um, so I have um, the, medium, the MMGs here, um, and then I've got the 76 millimeter cannon, um, and then now I'm going to have a guy on the top. He's going to serve sort of like a commander at times, um, and so yeah, just he'll be maybe a platoon leader or something. Um, and so I'll be working on that. Um, I actually have another Warlord order coming with more tanks, and so I'll be in the future talking about tanks more. Um, and since that's the case, I really wanted to make some headway on the stuff I've got here already and kind of finish it um, as the other stuff arrives. Um, I have a little bit of Christmas loot. Um, this, this, uh, I might do some review on some of this stuff, but this is the, um, many of you might recognize, this is the Perry Miniatures American War of Independence, um, which I'm going to use for both American War of Independence and French Indian War. Um, I'll, I'll be mixing them in. I'll likely the, the plan, the reason I got these is, well, one, I wanted to try out Perry miniatures. I mean, I hear they're great. I don't, I don't um, have any Perry stuff currently, so now this is the first thing, and I have something else to show as well. The, this kit gives you a variety of hats, and so what I wanted to do is be able to create a squad of light infantry, and so um, that's... British light infantry, so that's that's the plan, really. Um, but as well, because I get a lot more um, men with this. I mean, you get looks like um, 38 figures. It says in this set, so it's quite a bit. I'm going to do another um, troop of regulars with an officer as well, and so I'll have another um, group of regulars, um, and then another group of um, 
and then a new group of light infantry that I'll, that I'll use from this set. I'll probably at one point do a bit of a review of some various figures from this era, you know, both French Indian War and, um, and American War of Independence just side by side, just to show some of the differences. I'm expecting that the Perrys are going to be a bit taller and stockier than some of the stuff I have. Definitely the Minden, which would be the, the slimmest. But I got another Perrys thing, and this is the, um, oh no, excuse me, it's not Perrys, it's Renidra. I don't know why I thought it was Perrys. Um, it's the Renidra um, church. And so I'm um, quite excited to actually build this. Um, as I understand it, um, well, I wanted a, a bit of a North American church, and I just really like the look of this, and I've seen other people do it. This piece is attached to the front, which means if you just build it as it's designed, um, then you can't go inside it. But there's a simple conversion where you can just cut this piece off of here and attach it to this as a separate piece. And then all of a sudden, um, really, this just comes off. Um, with with this, so this this is all attached just to the roof as opposed to this front plate, and then you can use it as um, and I, you can use it for the inside, which is what I want. Um, but I'm looking forward to painting this one up. Um, I'm not going to paint it. I mean, it's not going to be like the barn that I did, where it's going to be all aged wood. But I am looking at doing like a white church, but sort of aged, where paint is peeling off in certain spots, and just sort of like an old church. Um, and so yeah, I'll be doing a series of videos on that. And then as well, one of my favorite companies, I ended up getting the Sarissa Precision um, Plantation House. I got the entry-level Plantation House because some of them have um, you know, patios on the main level, patios on the top level, and it looks, it really does change the look quite a bit. I wanted something very simple looking that I could use um, that wouldn't, um, I didn't want it to sort of I guess pin it to a specific area as much, like in the south or something, you know, for like American War of Independence. I want to be able to use it and feel like it fits pretty well with my table, like if I'm in like the north with my buildings um, in that ge geographic region. And I don't know, I just kind of felt like this one might fit in a little bit better given that. And here's a picture of the back. I'm really looking forward to painting this up because I really like these kits. Um, I did actually run out just to the, the store and I actually picked one of these up. Um, many of you probably know what this is, but this is like a sprue cutter. Um, I've, n I've actually not, um, I've always used my regular GW um, pliers to take stuff off the sprue, but I had noticed at times that if you get too close and you don't do it right, I mean, you can do some damage. And I saw a video where somebody was talking about this idea of these um, specific sprue cutters that create a much narrower cut and are better for taking plastic kits apart and I have used it actually already um, and it actually works great so I'm really glad that I got this. This is a testers sprue cutter. Um, for those of you who know I always like rant and rave about my gray wash and I like this model wash Vallejo. Um, I got a white wash um, just because I thought the concept was kind of cool to have a white wash. I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for yet but I actually picked that up. And because I actually enjoyed putting that plane together so much, I also got myself a, a, a Corsair. Um, this was all on Boxing Day, by the way, um, so I actually got sales on all, you know, it was good sales on all of it. But I got the, the Corsair by Revel as well. Um, and so I'm looking forward to actually doing that up at one point. So, all right, everybody. Well, um, I likely won't be uploading for before um, New Year's, and so I wish everybody a Happy New Year. Um, interested in all of the um, projects that people are going to be announcing for either Nick's painting challenge or various other challenges that are out there or just in general for folks just that are always putting new stuff up um, just the things that you guys are going to be working on and um, I will at one point definitely be putting a video up on the new year challenge that I'm going to be doing um, for Nick's New Year painting challenge. The one thing that I think I mentioned before already though is that I won't be starting the New Year off with it. I'm doing this World War II stuff and uh, but I am going to document and show what I'm going to do and then uh, at a certain point in this year, hopefully not too far out, I will be doing that particular challenge. Okay, talk to you later everybody. Take care.